All right, we're live. All right, thank you. Back from a very short break, and we are now moving on to S20 with uh, Ledge Council Katie McClinn. Uh, and there were some questions yesterday with respect to um, the definition of um, PFAS in the bill. And uh, we did reach out to folks um, to look at what other states have for definitions. And we also heard from uh, Westrock, the organization, the company up in Franklin County on their concerns. And I think we all saw that uh, information. Um, Katie, I think from that, can we look at the definition of PFAS that we have and then uh, consider, you know, possibly uh, changing that based on what we've heard? I also, I, I also looking at uh, what other states have done, um, it's pretty clear that we might be able to make some changes. Sure, I'm trying to pull up the document. Okay, everyone seeing S20? Yes, thank you, good. I'll scroll down to the definition of PFAS. Somebody there? Did a senator need to speak up? I heard I heard somebody, so I don't know. Maybe I didn't. Okay. Go ahead, Katie. Um, so I'm I'm not sure what you want to hear from me. I know that there has been um, <laughs> yes. I know that um, you've received email communications from at least one advocate on what different states are doing um, with regard to this definition. And I know um, that there's been information from um, a, a, an expert about um, recommendations. So I, I don't know where you wanna start or if you wanna- I think that the, the concern, I think the concern was with the phrase or chemical compound meant to replace perfluoroalkyl per alcohol and perfluoroalkyl substances that have similar chemical properties. And that definition actually uh, going back and looking at the bill S-295 last year uh, was not in the bill. Um, and, it's, and it is not consistent with, it is less consistent with other states. And I think if we took that out, we'd be consistent with, um, I'm trying to remember Maine and Washington. And we have that the the state uh, information that I think was Lauren Hurl who sent that along to us. It was. I was trying to pull it up, but now I can't do that because I'm sharing my screen. Um, um, so I can't do both at once. Well, take um, this one but, down. I mean, we can we can we can get this one up on our. Oh, there it is. I got it. Okay. Let me see if no, I can whole find her email. Yeah. Go ahead, Senator. Um, thank you, Senator Lyons. Um, so I, as I think Katie alluded to, I reached out, as I said I would, to um, an environmental chemist um, at Middlebury College um, who, I don't know if any, none of you were on the committee, but uh, she was an expert witness on the lead bill that we did two years ago in the education committee and was extremely helpful. Um, and she also pulled in um, an uh, environmental studies um, professor who works on PFAS and they looked at the definitions in the bill. Um, and they both were fine with the broader definition of PFAS that includes that phrase um, because it, it's an attempt to, you know, as chemistry changes very quickly to um, sort of catch things that may be coming down the pike that are equally as harmful. Um, however, I, if this makes other members of the committee feel more comfortable, I'm, I'm willing to um, move on that and, and, and revise this definition. However, I would like to look at the other two definitions of chemical compounds in the bill. Well, that we will. I thought we'd start with the one that we had questions about yesterday. Right, and then, right. Yeah. 
Yeah, no. So I'm just saying that I'm I'm willing to move on this one, but want to make changes to the other ones, and so I'm I'm, well, let's, I'm let's offering wait. a compromise here. Let's wait. <laughs> I'm there's no compromise in chemistry. <laughs> let's uh, let's go. I'm kidding. There is uh, in wording though, and that's where I'm at. <laughs> let's go. Um, let's go to the the definitions that other states use that are um, helpful to us. I, I have Lauren's email pulled up. Would it be helpful to yeah. do that with the committee? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So Lauren writes, if the committee is interested, here is a proposed change to the PFAS definition in S20 that would make it fully aligned with how New York, Washington, and Maine all define PFAS in their statutes. The definition is also what was used in S295 in Vermont last year. So perfluoral alkyl and polyfluoral alkyl substances or PFAS means a class of fluorinated organic chemicals containing at least one fully fluorinated carbon atom. So I think that's what we have now. And we would just remove the second clause of the definition in S220 if the committee chose to, to follow this, um, this recommendation. I'm, I'm good with that. I think we should do it. I think it keeps us consistent with other states. I, um, I'm not sure where that um, phrase came from. May I ask a question? Um, so I'm gonna try to work on an amendment while the committee continues to discuss because we have to get it edited and back to you in time to vote. Are you looking for a strike all amendment or are you looking for um, uh, just instances that, of amendment yeah, what's best I, I think it's up to you what what is what is the easiest for you in terms of editing and having a bill prepared because we're not we still have to go through uh bpa and uh, phthalates so i think both are easy it's just what's easiest to read i know sometimes folks like strike all because it's easier to read sometimes if there's so few changes it's nice to highlight that there are only a couple of changes in the bill so it's really up to the committee um, I, I like prefer strike alls because okay. they're easier Good. in the, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's, let's, the, so then let's move on to um, the bisphenol A and um, phthalates. And I will say, um, historically, the, the, We've had so much testimony on both of these in terms of uh, from folks from the FDA, the EPA, uh, and then independent researchers from Emory University and other places where um, these chemicals have been identified as uh, clinically important um, or causing um, health problems. So I, the, the Ruth, you reached out to um, the environmental ke chemist at Middlebury. I did read her email and um, I think she said, I, I'm going to, I'm going to try and pull it up. Well, Senator Lyons, if you, if you would let me talk about it, I would appreciate it. <laughs> I will. Um, I will I've... in just a minute. I'm not ready for that yet. Hold on. Good. I just want to remind us that um, as we're looking at this, we're looking to ensure that our definitions are consistent with what we've done in the past and that they're consistent with what other states have. And then also a, another comment I will make is that for something like BPA or for phthalates, the Department of Health will be writing rules around uh, much of this and how those uh, chemicals would be identified. So it, it, this is just a start. I just, that's all I wanna say. Josh, you have your hand up and then Ruth, I'm gonna let you go through what you have. Yeah, sorry to slow us down, but just, to, just for no. clarification, what, what we're gonna have Katie work on is that, that email from Lauren Hurl, uh, that's the language we're gonna move forward with, with my understanding? Yes. Okay, and that, that is the compromise and that seems to help everyone involved. So great, thank you. Yeah, no, that's good. And then, so, uh, and now we're gonna go to, um, uh, Ruth has reached out to um, Kate Crawford and um, Molly Costanza Robinson who are at Middlebury. And um, we're gonna 
listen to what they what is in um, Dr. Costanza Robinson's. Did I say it backwards? No. No. Uh, email. Uh, so, go ahead, Ruth. Sure. So the the definition that we have in the bill for bisphenols is. Um, is really a definition about what they're used for rather than a definition, the chemical definition of what they are. And so I heard from a number of people, I actually got calls last night at home about this definition after the testimony. And it's, you know, it's concerning to me that we don't have a chemical definition. We'd rather have a definition about what it's used for because a lot of things can be used to make polycarbonate a plastic and and epoxy resins, but what is the chemical we're talking about that is a chemical of concern? And so I reached out to Dr. Robinson and um, she provided a definition that is more about its chemical properties. Um, and Katie, I, I sent it to you as well so you can see what she said. And I sent it also to Lauren Hurl um, because I know that we had asked her to look into other states. And she said, um, that um, that um, she thought that um, it would uh, that it would be consistent with for both the, the definition of biphenols and then the next one is phthalates um, are consistent with what Washington State uses and is consistent with what the literature she could find on these chemicals in terms of law in other states. Um, so she felt comfortable with the definitions that Dr. Costanza Robinson um, offered and they are more chemically correct than the definitions that are in the bill. The, the bisphenols um, definition is based on um, an old definition of BPA that was used a few years ago and BPA is just one of the many types of chemicals in the bisphenol class as far as I understand. I'm not a chemist so I'm getting in a little over my head um, but um, so Dr. Robinson suggested that we use the chemical definition and then insert, you know, the term that it's bisphenols are primarily used in the manufacture of polycarbonate plastic and epoxy resins. So we have both the chemical definition and then an example of what they're used for. Um, and then for phthalates, um, she has a definition that is more precise um, about its chemical compounds. And again, Lauren said that that is consistent with Washington State's definition that they use in their law. Um, so I, I just hope that we're, it's really important as you all know that we're no, I, this correct is, in this, our definitions. Uh, Senator Hurdy, this is extremely helpful. Thank you. You're and, welcome. And so, um, uh, questions on on this, and and as you read it, I think the the issue with the with the phthalates was the uh, Department of Redundancy, and so if we can take that away, that's a good idea. And then um, having a more of a, a chemical based definition, uh, and I try. I, Katie, did you find our a, a definition in our underlying statutes? Because I looked for it and I couldn't find it because I was trying to see if we had that somewhere already. We looked at the bisphenol one yesterday as a committee, and um, that was the same. I mean, probably it's what happened when we were drafting the bill two years ago is we right. lifted the one from existing statute. Those match, yeah. Okay. So on. Okay. So let's let's pick phthalates first, and then we'll go to the bisphenol, and then uh, so we can uh, sort of clean this up because I think Ruth, thank you. It, this is um, we may as well do it right if we're going to do it. So. Right, and I can I can read out loud what she said if if that's helpful. But she also I can I didn't include Nellie on the email, but I can forward it to Nellie. Um, Dr. Costanza yeah. Robinson is fine with having it posted on the website if people want to look at what she says. Yeah, do that. Let's have okay. Nellie post it. Um, Katie, you have I think suggestions from Lauren Hurl that are consistent with the suggestions from. Dr. Uh, Costanza Robinson. And so maybe we could put, um, we can take the redundancy out of phthalates unless uh, anyone disagrees with that. Are we good with that committee? Yes. Can I, yes. Josh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ruth, no. Okay. No, I'm uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was <laughs> typing at the same time. I know. I'm just <laughs> 
Uh, sorry, I, it, it's Friday and it, it, we're all we're all burned up. So, so the d definition would be phthalates means any member of the class of organic chemicals that are esters of phthalic acid. Exactly. And they all have, well, they would have two carbon chains lo located at the eight ortho position. So putting that in there is a redundancy in the department of redundancy. Exactly. She explains the chemistry behind it. It's beautiful. I love reading her emails. I'm like, oh, I kind of remember this from 11th grade. <laughs> well, that's good. This is good. All right. So then let's go to, um, so Katie, we can do that. And then on um, bisphenol, adding in the chemical definition so we're clear. It seems to make it more consistent with the other two definitions. Yeah, it's good. The bisphenol means any member of a class of industrial chemicals that contains two hydrox hydroxyl phenyl groups. Bisphenols are used primarily in the manufacture of polycarbonate plastic and epoxy resins. That's what she suggested. You're definitely a chemist. Yes. <laughs> I did really well in chemistry, but it was a long, long time ago. <laughs> okay. Katie, did you, do you have all that? I do. I might just suggest if you go with that definition, um, instead of having two sentences, um, just combining them. Um, so bisphenols means any member of a class of industrial chemicals that contain two hydro hydroxyphenyl groups, which are used primarily to manufacture um, yeah. polycarbonate plastic and epoxy resins. Will that work? Okay. Yeah, that will. Well, what does the which apply? apply to does it apply to the hydroxyphenyl groups or to bisphenols that's when you just read it out loud it did confuse me all right what do you think Kim, uh committee you, you katie do you think that is better clarity to keep two sentences or yeah i was thinking it modified bisphenols but I don't want there to be any yeah. confusion. We don't so want any confusion. It's going to cause confusion. Some, somebody will parse that out. Keep it as two sentences. Who already should have been a uh, lawyer. <laughs> That's what my dad thought too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, does the committee feel comfortable with those changes? Mm -hmm. Good. Thank I think you they're all. Good. Yeah, thank no, thank you. This is very helpful. I'm glad you did that. Very good. And, I, and just FYI, so I'm working with some Middlebury students and Kate Crawford on the bill. So it'll be nice for them to see that their senator and their other uh, professor have influenced um, changes to the bill. Yeah, Kate mentioned that to me last night. And I was like, oh, what a great small world connection this is. So that, that was really, that was really I, I, great. Yeah. They watched, they watched the debate yesterday and the testimony yesterday. So that was good. Um, I have one, if we're done with this, I have one more thing that um, I wanted to mention about this okay. bill. On the um, bill, hold on, just hold okay. on, keep that thought. Um, okay. Katie, are you good with the three suggestions there? Okay. I'm still typing, but I, I caught them and they're being entered right now. <gasps> good. Okay. All right. Senator Hardy, you had... Uh, let, let's just, let me ask everyone if you have any other um, questions or information for the bill. Senator Hardy, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, yesterday I asked about, I think I asked in committee, but I definitely asked um, Katie to look into um, the relationship between the National Guard and this bill and what would apply and not apply to them. I'm, I, I'm sure you're all getting emails about this as well, um, but it's come up and Katie did some research. And since she's typing, I can just read what she wrote to me. Um, uh, and she, she also consulted with Damian Leonard. Is that okay, Katie, if I just read what you wrote to me? Yeah, please go okay. ahead. 
Okay. She also consulted with Damian Leonard in Ledge Council, who does who drafts in the area and under and works on jurisdictional issues with the military. So she said Damian has reached out to the National Guard and they have confirmed that they no longer use firefoot fighting foam containing PFAS. Damian also tells me that when the guard is in this state is in state status. They are a state entity subject to state law, except when federal law preempts the state law. For example, federal laws and regulations determine the weapons, uniforms, training requirements, system of ranks, and so forth for the Guard. When they are in federal status, they are a federal entity and subject to federal law. But Camp Johnson, the Air Guard facility at Burlington Airport, and the armories around the state are, I believe, all state-owned facilities and that are subject to that are subject to a wide array of federal requirements. So my understanding is that this bill would apply to the National Guard um, in when they're in state in their state status, which is when they're helping the state with things. And so they're most of the time in state status, and that their facilities are state facilities, so it would apply and they don't use PFAS in their firefighting foam. So hopefully that answers some of the questions and it, it well, certainly- Well, it does, better. it answers the question, but it also raises whether or not we need that little section in the bill. What was the, oh, about the federal- Yeah, so Katie, that I mean, that's a Katie and, and Damien type question, uh, given that information. And, and again, Ruth, you've done great work here. Thank you. I, I, Sure. The sense I, I got from um, advocates, and I know Lauren reached out to um, Washington State where they had worked on the same language, um, that um, it did need to remain in, um, okay. in the bill for All the right. time being. Okay, well then we'll leave it. We'll leave it, uh, but at least we have a greater understanding of, of what's there, and that's very helpful. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else? Phew. Senator Cummings, you're you're muted. You're still muted, Senator. You are still muted. Are you not talking? <laughs> okay. We all need sign language on Zoom. That's that's the, that that's what we need. We need something. Okay. Anything else, committee? Wow. All right. So, Katie, what what's our timeline for looking at a clean copy of the bill? Katie's frozen. Katie, you're frozen. Okay, she'll be back. You're unfrozen. You, you know you were frozen and then you disappeared. I was kicked all the way off and I had to re-enter the meeting. Yep. Oh, okay. So, I mean, the question is how, what, what, what do you think the timeline is on um, having a clean copy for us to look at? Because I, I, you know, unless I hear differently, I think we may as well go ahead and, uh, pass it, you know, forward the bill, vote on it at least. You're frozen again. Yeah. Poor Katie, she must be, oh, there she is. I'm back. <laughs> okay. Did you hear my question? I heard the question is. <laughs> How long does it take for you to bring us a clean copy so we can consider it as for a possible vote? Oh, I shouldn't take too much time at all. I've highlighted those changes and the editors are waiting for it. If you want, um, we can look at it while the editors are looking at it. I expect that there wouldn't be very many changes. So why don't you, um, could I have two minutes to send it to editing and then I'll walk through what I have with you? Sure, do you want, do you need a longer uh, break or? Nope, I'll Come just okay. send it to them um, and All then right. I can walk, walk through it with you while they're editing it. All right, that's good. Thank you. 
Okay, let me share the document. All right. Okay, so the first change was the definition of PFAS, and now we're removing the second clause of that definition. So the definition reads, perfluoral alkyl and polyfluoral alkyl substances or PFAS means a class of fluorinated organic chemicals containing at least one fully fluorinated carbon atom. The next change is in the second definition section. And that's the change to bisphenols. It means any member of a class of industrial chemicals that contain two hydroxyphenyl groups. Bisphenols are used primarily in the manufacture of polycarbonate plastic and epoxy resins. The third change is to phthal Phthalates uh, means any member of the class of organic chemicals that are esters of phthalic acid. Does that look right to folks? It looks good. Okay. Senator Cummings, and you're muted, Senator. Is that the same definition we used in last year's bill? For phthalates? Yeah. You mean for the S two ninety five that yeah the same yeah it no this 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 go ahead Katie um, no we just changed it I think the bill is introduced had what was in last in S two ninety five from last year so it's been updated in this version okay but this wasn't what had some people concerned because it was so broad. We've, um, the proposal in this bill is to strike out um, the language containing two carbon chains located in the eight ortho position. And I think that okay. was the, the dupl I know, <laughs> the duplicative language. So, um, okay. so it's been changed. This isn't the yeah, S295 okay. version. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. All right. I, I'm just trying to figure out what we're changing yeah, because there was a lot more resistance this year than last year, and I'm I'm yeah. trying to figure out what what we changed that caused it. Okay, I think and the definition of PFAS was broader this year, and we just yeah. narrowed it again. The definition yeah. of bisphenols that 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 we got some testimony on that yesterday was not precise enough. And so changing it makes it more precise. And then the phthalates definition just avoids redundancy. Um, okay. So I, I think they're better definitions and hopefully satisfy some of the concerns that we heard. Well, I think uh, certainly the PFAS definition um, change yeah. certainly does satisfy. And I think some of the others are come closer to, I think they will also help. Oh. Um, anything else, committee, on this? Katie, may as well. This is in, this is, you've sent that off to editing. Okay. What is our, what are you, committee discussion? Um, is there an interest in, um, Moving the bill to the Senate or voting on the bill? Yeah. Senator Cummings? Okay. I'll move approval of this is a strike all? Yeah. Okay. So it's draft. What draft is it, Katie? What draft is it, Katie? <laughs> It'll be Amendment 1.1. 1 .1. Amendment 1.1. 1 .1. Okay. We don't really need a second. Uh, no. Yeah. A discussion committee. Okay. Um, our clerk. Are hey, you ready? Uh, I'm ready to go, Senator Lyons. Um, this is for S20. 
Amendment 1.1. Uh, I'll call the question myself. I am a yes vote. Senator Hardy? Yes. Senator Cummings? Yes. Senator Hooker? Yes. Senator Lyons? Yes. Terrific. You guys have done great work. And uh, I really want to acknowledge the, the heavy lift that Senator Hardy did on this one. Thank you. And also Senator Terenzini, both uh, improved the bill radically. Appreciate it. Thank you. Teamwork. All right, um, Katie, so what's the timing on getting that bill, do you think? And then I have a question for the committee. Um, they're looking at it now, so it could be in the okay. next 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So is there someone who would like to present this bill? I'll you try have unless you do. I know you love this kind of thing, Jenny. So <laughs> you know you have S twenty four. So I, I, I know. I, yeah, so. I'm fine with doing it, or I would love to do it. But I also know you love this kind of bill, so I don't want to take it out of your hands. So either way, well, I might fine. I might enjoy doing it since uh, the only bill I have is a is technical corrections to dates right now. So, <laughs> uh, uh, well, okay, I'll do it. Um, I don't mind. And then, unless Senator Hooker, you are looking for some more challenges on this one? No. Um, Senator Terenzini? Senator Lyons. <laughs> no. Senator Cummings, with all your free time? No. Okay. No, I got captive insurance. That's enough of a mystery. I, I know that. Yeah, that's I'm enough. Well, I'm, I'm going to be looking to Senator Hardy to stand up and be uh, the chemist on the floor. I can play one on TV. Yeah, that yeah. would be fun. <laughs> We're good. All right. So, um, committee, a, a couple of things I do want to talk about while, while we have a minute and then before Katie gets back. Uh, and we will end early today, which is an amazing thing to say, given that it's uh, crossover day. Um, there are a lot of bills that we uh, haven't worked on, uh, some of which uh, we passed last year, and I think that we will we'll pick up on those going forward. There was one little bill I think I'm particularly interested in, and that's the um, health care climate change bill that we that we passed, and that we I think we should look at again. There are some really interesting issues embedded in there re related to um, uh, for example, tick-borne illnesses or other emergent diseases that we're going to see as a result of uh, temperature change in our area. And we've already seen them. So that's a bill I'd like to look at. There are all, uh, the Parent-Child Center bill, of course, and it's one that we talked about in committee last year. And I, I think it's an important bill for us to consider. The, um, the, the ALS registry is certainly uh, something that we can all agree. We'd like to have the Department of Health work with us on. Um, Department of Health, of course, is extremely busy, but there's no reason why we can't uh, look at that bill. And so there are other bills there. I do have, I, ha I know that Senator Hooker and Hardy and others have introduced a, a health care uh, reform type bill. And um, I've been working now for a long time on a bill. I picked some some of the pieces out from what we did last year and I've added in, I've got a 14 page bill right now and I'm meeting with a couple other people and I'm gonna add some other things into it and I will be reaching out to uh, some of you to sign on. So the healthcare reform I think is a, is a critical issue and we're at a really interesting stage right now with all of the variety of activities going on, but um, we have identified our our all payer model, our community outreach, our healthcare teams. There's a lot that we've identified that are, that's important in improving our healthcare system that should improve cost, quality, and access. So we will we'll, um, we'll, we will spend some time on that. And however we can bargain to get a bill 
passed before the end of this year, we're going to do that on healthcare reform. That's one of the goals we have. Um, so that's all I wanted to say. I said, you know, start thinking about the bills that are important to you and that we that we want to put out on the table. N next week, I'm looking at um, uh, we have to finish our work on H315 and our recommendations to uh, appropriations. And uh, I apologize. I probably should have had a, a, a draft letter to you today. Uh, time has not permitted that, nor has Jen Carby's time permitted that, but we will take a little bit more testimony on Tuesday from, from some of the VSEA DCF folks on a request. And we will, um, we will go through and um, possibly have a little draft letter that we can, or, or recommendations, doesn't have to be a formal letter, uh, to appropriations on our interests. And those being so far, uh, long-term care, recovery centers, um, what, and what else? I don't have my list right in front of me, but we have, have some other things we're interested in. So um, uh, kids' mental health and primary care, um, just a number of issues. On Wednesday next week, I, I, we, we received some information regarding the Kern Hatton School in Southern Vermont. And uh, you all have that information, I think, in an email from Carolyn Wesley. We're going to have uh, a, a full morning of testimony on Kern Hatton Wednesday. We will be joining or joined, somehow we're all together in room 11 with, um, no, we're on Zoom with Judiciary, Education, Health and Welfare in a joint committee meeting. And we're going to hear from folks who are very knowledgeable about what has happened at Kern Hatton in terms of the uh, childhood abuse that's gone on there. And we'll also hear from the Department of Children and Families and what they have done as re, uh, in what they did in September with their report to remove the licensure for state uh, children in the, um, under the protection of the state being allowed at the school. We'll hear about that. Cheryl and uh, Senator Terenzini, Senator Hooker and I have heard uh, from Emily Simmons, the lawyer in the Agency of Education when we were in the Education Committee meeting the other day about some of the uh, concerns uh, from the AOE perspective. So we'll hear that. And then we'll also hear about some of the judicial issues related to Kern Hatton, whether the civil, um, criminal, uh, and the involvement, if any, of some of our public safety in that um, whole area. It, so I'm, I'm just, I'm gearing us up because this is going to be a very challenging day. Um, if I have time to mention it again on Tuesday, I will, but I doubt, I, I don't know what our time will be like given it's crossover, the week after crossover. Um, and I, I, a little bit of a, you know, a, a warning and a concern that what we're going to hear is significant in terms of uh, abuse. And, uh, and the, but our ears need to be open to how we might improve our system within the um, Agency of Human Services uh, so that this kind of thing is, we, it has, has appropriate oversight going forward. And there's a whole range of things we can think about as we're listening to testimony. Um, I suspect that this will not be the last time that we take testimony related to Kern Hatton. So we'll probably be setting some time aside in committee to follow up um, on the issues we hear about. So if there isn't time for, you know, questions from everyone on the committee, because there's going to be a lot of us there on Wednesday, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that we have time to do that um, another day. And we, we will work on this. This is not, and it's not simple. But anyway, so that, uh, just, just a heads up um, 
for next week. Okay. Oh. Yeah, it's it, and it's not it's not that 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 Wednesday is 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 going to be challenging. So next week we'll also um, last I think last thing on next week um, we've put in some uh, confirmation hearings. So we've got a, a bunch of confirmation hearings from the governor. Uh, for his commissioners and other appointees, and we'll we'll take those up and interview some of those folks, and we'll have a chance not just to interview them uh, as uh, appointees, but maybe we'll also be able to dive in a little bit to the work that they're doing, and um, that would be good. Any questions, comments? Are we good? Go ahead, Ruth. And just then the next week or the week after, we'll start getting bills from the house. And it sounds like they're working on a lot of interesting stuff. So, yeah, we're there. <laughs> well, I do know, I, I'm not sure it's a lot of interesting stuff, but I think it's the bills that we're getting are big. So, yeah, I didn't mention the child care bill. That one, that one will take some time. Um, you're right. And we'll plug. We'll we'll start plugging those in as soon as we get them. Mm -hmm. We'll have time, uh, even perhaps as early as next week to dive in. But uh, I do know that the child care bill is currently in House Appropriations, so then they have to take it out on the floor. So we may not see that for a bit. And I don't know where some of the other bills are. I have been in communication with both uh, Representative. Pew and Representative Lippert, um, but everybody is, we're all up to our ears in crossover. All right, anything else? All right, um, so if you have a bill that you've been working on, for example, I know Senator Terenzini is very interested in the ALS bill. When we get to that, I might ask for you to put together some testimony for us. And similarly, when Senator Hardy, when we get to the parent-child bill, have you put together some testimony there? And then we'll see where else we get. Okay. I'd like to uh, look at, again, the workforce for primary oh care. Oh my gosh, how could we forget yeah. that? And it's uh, that bill should be coming out soon. And yeah. hopefully we can put plug that in somewhere so that we can get something done on that this year. Totally. Where is that bill now? I thought we had a bill. I thought we had your bill. It's going to be coming out with sponsors, co-sponsors. Oh, okay. And is working on that. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah. Senator Cummings. I'm not muted. Um, I'd like to do some work. We did some a few years ago on our entire designated agency mental health system. Yeah. Yep. We know we're going to need them. Um, uh, yeah. So we've got, yeah. Uh, yes, we've, in the whole mental health arena, we've got a whole lot to cover. Uh, the so just beginning at the institutional level to look at the middle sex, uh, the new middle sex facility and what that involves. And I know the house has been working a little bit on that. And then uh, absolutely designated agencies, our, our, uh, our SSAs, our DAs, uh, the whole area of disability issues, mental health issues, um, Yes, and uh, we did ask for uh, the Green Mountain Care Board to do a budget analysis of our DAs and our SSAs and how they stack up with other uh, service organizations. So we're gonna have to, and, and that, that then dives in and links in with uh, Senator Hooker's bill on workforce. We've got a lot to do there. I've also been um, in communication with, um, some of the executive directors of, of our larger DAs and asked them, uh, they've sent me some 
recommendations and information that as we get there, we can pull that up. So yeah, thank you, Senator Cummings for bringing that up. It's a huge issue. Um, and uh, our substance use area, substance use disorder area is a huge area. We're all aware of that. And, and finally, we may as well bring up prevention because uh, before the COVID hit, we put in place a, a, a fabulous opportunity for building prevention in our state. And we need to get caught up on what, where they are, where that is. I hope Ledge Council isn't listening because this is a lot of work. <laughs> we got a lot of work out of us. It's good. Um, okay. Anything else we have on our list? All right. I know there's, we have a bill in our committee on a mental health uh, suicide prevention bill that a number of, of folks uh, have introduced and maybe we'll try and put that into the discussion when we get, um, when we get there. Okay. Katie, how are we doing? Are you there? I'm here. Um, I just sent I just sent you an email. The um, editors flagged that the spelling of hydroxyphenyl, um, as it um, came uh -oh. from um, Dr. Costanza Robinson, or, or I don't know who it came from. Yeah, it came from her. I just emailed okay. her, Katie, to see if she could tell me the correct okay. spelling from the <laughs> chemical. Is it a phenyl or a phenyl, a phenol or a phenyl? I, well, yeah. The, the editors have flagged that they think that the spelling that came to us in the email has an extra L. Um, and I want to make sure we're spelling it correctly. I did, I did a quick Google search and I, I think they might be. Oh, hydroxyphenol, not hydroxyphenol. They're probably right. Okay. Yeah. It looks uh, like they're right, but I, I send it to her. I'll let you know as soon as she gets back to me, Katie. Okay, great. Thank right. you. Thanks. I don't know if there's a hydroxyl. There's no hydroxyphenol. <laughs> I don't think. Anyway, okay, yeah, the good, good work. Send it off. I'm looking for it. Uh, what page is that on? Page five. It's in the definition of bisphenols. Oh, okay. I went right by it. Are we done? <laughs> I'm, uh, what I'm going to say is, um, well, uh, Katie, we'll make that spelling correction. And then um, you'll get me the clean copy of the bill. Nellie, you'll get witness lists off to Ruth and to me. Um, and we have we've really exceeded our expectations in finishing early. This is great. We all need a little time today. And um, so unless someone has another topic they'd like to discuss, um, and I hope I haven't forgotten anything, but as you're thinking about H315, uh, we don't need to pile on. We had, we had a pretty good discussion, but if you see something there that we should uh, include, let me know um no later than saturday afternoon okay did you will you send us a draft of your letter to to jane uh, as soon as we have a letter we'll we'll look at it together and i'll you know we're not going to send it off until we've missed it y yes um katie we voted on s20 it was we missed uh, it <sighs> oh would you like to have us do it again <laughs> No, I must have been talking with the editors at the same time. Okay, I have the Senator document. Senator Tarantini, our clerk, uh, took a record of the vote, and the vote was what? The vote was five to zero in favor of the bill. Great. I'll make a note of that. I have the clean version that I will send to you, Senator Lyons, and to yeah. Nellie, and it can be changed if we find out that that L needs to be added back in. Perfect. 
Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Enjoy your um, free time. Nellie, we can go off YouTube and uh, then we